stick with the normal. We'll take a couple questions and then we'll uh, get you out of here. We'll start with Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Kelly, I, I wonder if this eight day kind of an extended break here was was needed after the Arizona game and, and kind of a rough couple of weeks and what you guys were able to accomplish during that time. Well, when you say a rough couple of weeks, we had a tough game at Arizona. I think before that we, we played uh, relatively well. We lost three of four. I get it, but uh, I don't think the world's coming to an end, but yeah, it was, it was nice to have a couple extra days. I think anytime, uh, you know, this time of year, you get in the meat of the schedule, uh, an extra day off is, is fine. I would have much rather have played the game in, in uh, Tempe, but um, we've turned our attention to Washington state. Ryan Thorburn, register guard. Kelly, how did the team respond in practice? And have you seen any leaders kind of come out of the Arizona game? You know, in past years, obviously, you had some great leadership, especially number 20, that would have vocally and by example taken the baton. Have you seen that as well? And how have they responded? We uh, have had two really good practices this week. I thought both Monday and, and Tuesday, yesterday, uh, we looked really good. We played really hard. Um, we were, it was, com they were competitive practices, the most competitive we've had in a while. Um, yeah, I think we're trying. You can tell people, um, they, they, they're engaged. And uh, I think they, they realize that we've, you know, got to be better this week. So I can tell there's been a little, little better focus. In terms of the leadership, Ryan, um, yeah, I, you know, you, you can tell some are trying. You know, I think they they realize this. They're in they're in new territory as well, so um, you know they realize that that we've got to do some things better. And um, and like I said, they they've come out more and more focused. I'm not necessarily going to say what players, you know, because leadership comes in different forms. Um, you know, you look at somebody like Aaron Bowley, who's uh, the consummate collegian. You know, she's a very professional. She she leads by example. She works hard. You know, she's always prepared every day, has a good attitude, you know. Uh, but you need leadership in different forms from different people. And it's manifested uh, as such. So we're still a work in progress in that regard. James Kreppi of the Oregonian. Kelly, after uh, the Arizona game, you mentioned looking into tightening the rotations a little bit, uh, not asking you to give away every which person and, and whatnot, but um, has that started in practice in terms of who might get more time and who might get a little bit less time and, and what that's starting to look like? Well, I don't know about more or less time, but we've uh, certainly put a certain unit together uh, a little bit more uh, this week. You know, we've, we've basically divided up our, our lineup uh, most days in practice, pretty much the whole year. We've basically set on a, on a group uh, that, that we hope will, will really work for us. And, uh, and then I think we'll just play it by ear for the rest of the game. But uh, I, I don't know if you're going to see the same kind of revolving door. Uh, but, you know, again, that remains to be seen. I, it's still uh, fluid in practice. I think we still have a lot of players that are vying for that time and co competing. Uh, back to Eric. Just an update on Sedona and kind of, I know last game, it seems like she was limited in terms of the number of minutes she could play. Is that opening up a little bit or, or kind of what's the progress been there? Yeah, I was, I was glad she got to play a little bit last week just to get her feet wet. And I thought she did a pretty good job. You can tell she's a little rusty. Um, yeah. Has had a nice week of practice. She's still limited to some degree in, in, uh, in what she can do during practice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she should be, uh, ready to go for this week. I think she's really excited too. And, and, uh, I think she's been pain free for the most part. Max Torres scooped up. Yeah, Kelly, um, just, uh, talking about, um, how last week was, was so, you know, kind of away from your guys' identity when you kind of tackle the task of, of regaining that identity, you know, what, what are some of the things you're looking for from your team? We can't turn the ball over as much. We can't uh, uh, deal with pressure um, in that in that way. Uh, we've got to be a little bit more patient offensively. I thought we took some really early shots. Uh, you know, the one good thing that came out of that, you guys, we, we gave, you know, gave up 57 points. That That's really a nice job to a team like that on the road. Um, they had 20 in the first quarter. So to allow 37 points over the last three quarters is, 
you know, really getting it done. If you would have told me that we would have held them to 57, I would have said, well, we got a double digit win. And obviously that wasn't the case. So, um, so there were some things to, to build on from, from that. It wasn't all bad down in the desert, but uh, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, one of those games, I think we talked about it earlier, you know, we knew that we were, ha- were going to have some highs and lows, be a, kind of a roller coaster at times. Uh, I didn't think it would quite look like that on the down, but um, you know, we, we just got to get back up and, and do better this week. That's all I can say. I don't really know any, anything else to say in that regard. It, it's over. Hopefully we learn from it and, and we'll be better. We better be better on Friday or else, uh, you know, the same could happen. Uh, back to Ryan. Kelly, you alluded to it a week or so ago, but your win at Washington State turned out to be a big one considering how feisty they are. Now, I know they're coming off back-to-back losses, but both in overtime to, to good teams. Yeah. What's it going to take to sweep them, and why are they so good this year? Well, they're, be, they're good because they know who they are. You know, I think their roles have been defined, uh, and then they have two really – great players, superstars. The two sisters are, are excellent. And, uh, um, you know, their inside game is, is, is coming as well. You know, they just have a bunch of kids that really know how to play. Uh, they don't make ton of mistakes. Um, they, they, they get good shots each and every time down, they have the ball in the right people's hands. Uh, it was that they're, they're a good team. They, they really are. And, and they defend well, they scout. Well, you can tell their kids stick to the scout. So we're going to have to be really good. Yeah, that, that game that went up there has proven to be, um, you know, a good win for us. I still see we're like fourth in the net. So, you know, I think that that, that kind of a road win always benefits you. But, um, yeah, we're going to have to be equally as good this time, if not better. Back to James. Looking uh, uh, beyond even just Friday, Kelly, uh, obviously Washington is postponed their game with OSU, but I realize contact tracing and timing could, could impact things. So beyond just, it could be another short week of one game, or you certainly hope it's two. Do you have any inclination as to when the ASU game may get made up? Will, will they come uh, for like a couple of days early for one of those and Cal's on the brink. Is there any concern about them doing what Virginia did and, and calling it a season? Well, there's always a concern, uh, you know, because uh, this thing, you just don't know from day to day what's going to happen next. I'm hopeful that we will play on Sunday. I hope we don't have just one game. In terms of the makeup, James, you know, I don't know how they're going to play that out. You know, that's the first Pac-12 game we've missed. So if they prioritize and say, well, you know, because there's only going to be so many games that are going to be able to be made up. And so they might go with the teams that uh, have missed the most games. You know, maybe they'll have priority. I don't know. I haven't been told that. That's not ducking the question. That's just something that the Pac-12 has not told me. I know we have Oregon State on the last weekend. Everybody has their travel partners. I think that was done so that, um, you know, if you needed a makeup game or two, maybe that's where it could be slotted. We always have that extra week between the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. Uh, I think we've had, there's been talk that that time could also be used for makeup. Um, you know, look at Stanford. Stanford's next week going up and playing Washington State Wednesday and Friday. So that's potential. I, I think it's, uh, it's still up in the air, big guy. I don't, I don't know. But where, where are you at? That looks like some man cave. Yeah, I just don't like people looking in the back of my house, Kelly. It's a, it's actually a bar in New Orleans. But that, yeah, was, that was my next guess. I don't yeah. have my glasses, but it looks like you got something going on there. Yeah. Andrew Hopner, KZI. For the record, I thought it was the bar from The Shining. So, <laughs> that, no, Kelly, That's as pretty far. appropriate. That's a good call there, Andrew, actually. <laughs> As far, Kelly, as, um, you know, to follow kind of up on what what James said, you know, coaches talk all the time about, you know, controlling the things you can control. And this is kind of a season where there are a lot of things that are out of your control. You know, if you're talking postponed games that could potentially impact seating, for instance, when conference tournament time comes, I mean, how do you balance that as a coach, knowing that you, you can only control certain things, but those things may have a direct effect on what happens come March? Yeah. You know, I have a coaching friend of mine who I follow on Twitter. I've known him for a long time and he every day tweets out blessed to see another day. 
And I always kid him. I said, well, that's really setting a pretty low bar, <laughs> you know, like I'm alive again another day, but that's really kind of what you have to, you know, you have to have that approach. We're just fortunate each and every day, Andrew, to, to, to be able to play. We don't, not knowing what tomorrow will bring. Um, listen, tomorrow will be, or not tomorrow, uh, Friday will be our 13th game. That's the minimum number that you have to play to be NCAA tournament eligible. So it's an important game. We just want to get at least one more in, uh, in case the worst happens. But I, I don't know if that answers your question or not. I went on a tangent there, but uh, uh, I, I really am proud of my team, man. I, I am. What they're going through in all student athletes is, is unlike anything obviously we've ever seen, and it's really hard on them. But I, I'm I'm been so happy uh, that they've had really good attitudes about this whole thing. We were all disappointed when the ASU game was canceled because we played on a Thursday. A, we wanted to get that taste out of our mouth. And B, we had an extra day to spend in the sun in the desert. So, you know, that was a little disappointing. But uh, uh, it's good to be back home. I, I'm excited to, to, to get out and play again on Friday. And this is a good opponent. It'll, it'll test us. I'm, I'm confident that we're going to play well. I, I really am. Back to Eric. Coach, I know you recruit internationally. Were you how familiar were you with Charlize in particular, and, and the fact that she's come out and she's averaging twenty a game? I mean, and on a good team, kind of. Is this? Did you know much about her? I I, I saw her in Belarus. I went that summer. We were chasing some of the uh, uh, American kids. You know, we were recruiting them, and we're in deep with some of them. And I did watch them play a couple of times, and she was very impressive. Uh, at that time, you know, she's, she would have been part of this freshman class. We were in pretty deep with this crew already. I didn't see the need to, you know, maybe get involved there. And uh, she has proven to be everything that I saw and more. I, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Uh, and, uh, and good on her. I mean, you know, she reminds me of Sabrina in a lot of ways, Eric. She, she doesn't get sped up. You know, she's strong and, and knows, just knows how to play the game. You know, Sabrina never wowed anybody with her athleticism necessarily, even though she was a very good athlete because athleticism to me is body control, strength, um, uh, you, you know, I, IQ, I, I think all that plays into it. And she is, um, uh, she's very similar in that, in that way. Yeah. She's, she's quite a player. Uh, back to Max. Kelly, uh, sadly, you know, definitely been one of the, the biggest uh, bright spots of the team this season and in this recent stretch. What have you seen from her to, to you know, play this well? And, and how have you been addressing, you know, protecting the inside with uh, Sedona kind of being up and down as she eases back in? Uh, I, I'm sorry, who, which I, I, it bugged out. What player? Uh, Sabley. Oh, Satu or uh, uh, Niara. <laughs> yeah, Niara's been great. Uh, she uh, she continues to to you know be really impressive, especially on the boards. Um, you know, she's become our go to player in in a lot of ways. Uh, works hard every day in practice, um, and you know she's got to continue to 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 finish better and maybe get to the line a little bit more. Uh, but I'm really pleased with how she's playing. I think she's going to continue to grow, and we still have to remember she's played 12 games in uh you know two two and a half years so it's still she's still trying to work things out i i don't want to keep using that as an excuse but uh but it it is relevant i think so yeah i i've been real pleased with her we're gonna need her down the stretch if we hope to make a splash in the ncaa and i still think we will uh you know she she's gonna have to be a, a big part of that got a couple more for you coach yeah no no uh, problem you guys and next we got ryan back to ryan Kelly, did you know Kim Etheridge before this hire and what's impressed you most about how she's turned it around there? Well, she's a basketball person. You know, she really is. She, she understands the game, loves the game, played the game at a high level. I, I don't think people under or realize she, I think is in the hall of fame at the university of Texas. That's saying something. Um, and she, uh, you know, I think is real confident in who she is and what she, she does. And her, her players, you can tell, are just very well coached. They know who they are. They play to their personality and to their strengths. And that, that comes from the coach. So I'm happy for, yeah, followed her, her career for years at Kansas State. When I was at Gonzaga, she always called. We always tried to set up a game, never made it work, and then followed her, followed her, her time at Northern Colorado. She did a great job there. 
Brandon Cam Cameron Cavell. Hey Kelly, uh, we asked you before the season leading up to it, what you expected to be playing with no fans. Now that you're 12 games in, uh, has, is there anything that sort of surprised you or do you feel like your players are mostly able to focus and it doesn't have an impact on the way they play and their attitudes? Uh, no, I, I, I'd be lying if it said it didn't, didn't have an impact. I, I think they would love to at least have their families. I, that's still one of those things that I don't quite understand. Um, but, uh, they, they, we need the fans. It, it's a bigger deal here. You know, we, we lose that game to UCLA made two really great runs. You, you tell me that 12,000 fans in Matthew Knight arena wouldn't have made a difference in a game like that. Of course it does. It, it's impacted our program. I think more than most, because we really truly do have a home court advantage. Uh, and, uh, and it's a shame, quite frankly, that's another reason we, why we were disappointed with the Arizona state game, because, they're, they're, I think, the only place right now that actually allows fans, and you can have family uh, up to so many. So we actually had a few families that were flying out for that game. And, uh, and I saw the disappointment in some of our players whose families were going to be there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I wish that there was a way. I go to Costco and rub shoulders with lots of people every time I'm there. We have a 12,000-seat arena. You know what I mean? I'll just leave it at that because I, I like Governor Brown. <laughs> All right, Coach, unless there's any last-second questions. That's probably going to be the soundbite, isn't it? <laughs> you guys don't do not do me like that now. I have a quick question. I'm so Come sorry, on, Coach. I just, I'm sorry. I jumped on late, so I wanted to wait and make sure that everyone who was here on time got their questions in. But um, I saw Rob tweeting that you've just been really encouraged with the way the team has bounced back in practice since that loss. Is there any more insight, I guess, since we can't watch the practice and we don't get to talk to the players more often, who's sort of been leading that charge on your team to make sure that the bounce back continues? As some of the returners, quite frankly. I think Aaron Bowley's uh, really tried to step up. I think Taylor Chavez as well. And that's where it's got to come from. They're the ones that understand the culture. Uh, you know, they've never been in this position before uh, since the, since they've been here. And so, um, you know, they're they're trying to deal with something that's new to them and uh, in, in roles that that are new to them. So but I, I've seen it. They're trying. We're trying. I mean, we're, you know, we're not we're not excited with where we've been. It, it we've taken a hit. I'm not going to lie to you. It happens. Stanford is going to discover that. I'm sure they've already discovered it this week. You take a hit. And, uh, and, and it kind of rocks you for a second. And then you've got to regroup and, uh, and, and fight your way through it. It's just human nature. And uh, like I said, this is something that's very new to really everybody involved in our program right now outside of the coaching staff who, you know, our first couple of years, we, we had some ups and downs. So anyway, we'll see on Friday, man. <laughs> we'll see. Win, lose, or draw. Hopefully we just look better, play harder, play with some more passion. Thank you. All right, coach. I think that's it. Okay. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks, coach.